Audacity is a free audio recording and editing program that's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In this video, we're going to cover the Audacity 3.2 update and look at some of the new features that are added to the program and how they can be used in the audio editing process. Prior to the Audacity version 3.2 update, Audacity was pretty limited for audio effects processing. All audio effects had to be processed to a track instead of being applied in real time, and therefore to get rid of an effect or change it, you would have to undo the previous changes with the Project Undo button. This leads to a lot of problems, especially if it happened earlier in the edit, and you would need to undo all those changes after that if it's even still possible. In this case, Audacity was using more of a destructive audio editing technique, where you can't go back and easily undo changes, instead of a non-destructive editing process like most digital audio workstations use, and if you close the project, it would then save an updated copy of that audio track that you were working on to make it permanent. With the release of the Audacity 3.2 update, Audacity has added some limited tools for real-time audio effects processing. When we launch Audacity and create a new audio track, we can now see this new button in the left track panel called Effects. This will open up the real-time effects bank for that track. Of course, all the old effects that we had previously on Audacity that are added as a process to the track instead of real-time are still available through the top effects menu. From the effects panel, we just need to press the Add Effect button to start adding new audio effects. We'll see here that it's pulling up a lot of the audio effects from different developers on my computer, but none of the effects here are from the Audacity team. It's a little bit disappointing that not a single one of the included audio effects that Audacity has previously used to process sound is included in the real-time effects, and they're entirely reliant on using third-party plugin packages to offer this new feature. Another thing that we don't really have good access to in this program is input monitoring, meaning being able to listen to a track that's recording with the effects processing in real time as we're playing the instrument. To get some compatible effects, we need to go to the Get More Effects button from the dropdown and go to the website, which shows us a list of compatible plugins with Audacity's real-time features. I'll add the Melda Production free bundle to get a variety of compatible effects. Now we can add these to our track and see that I can equalize the track or add any of this processing in real time. The other feature added to Audacity with the latest update is support for VST3 plugins. Previously, Audacity supported VST2 plugins which date back to the early 2000s. VST3 is the new standard from Steinberg which has been released for plugin development since 2008, so having this feature should improve compatibility with new plugins. Steinberg has recommended phasing out VST2 development as of 2013, with no further support for the SDK as of 2018, so moving into VST3 is not only a good feature, but essential to Audacity being able to support any new plugins that are being developed now. Thanks for checking out this video on the Audacity 3.2 update, where the Audacity team added real-time plugin processing and VST3 plugin support. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is released.